This is Richard back at you guys. We got John's 05 Corvette transmission in the house. John called me a long time ago and uh, wanted us to do his tranny. And I told John, I said, John, go find all the parts that you physically want to put in your tranny because right now parts are hard to come by. Might take me three weeks to get this part, three weeks to get this part. And what he did is he just went out and got all the pieces that we need. Uh, the pieces that he didn't get, we could supply here. So we, we still have a lot of parts here. But John, he must have got on Sonex's webpage because I'm telling you, this gentleman here bought all the Sonex parts you can possibly put in one of these units. But you can come over and see. I'll start out a little bit. John got us the Sonex uh, forward drum assembly. Really nice piece. Here comes all the plates, the screws, snap rings, pistons, and stuff like that to install that. And then John got us the Sonex uh, billet input shaft. Show you this beautiful piece here. See, some of this stuff hasn't even been opened yet. I say. Now we'll press this in the drum ourselves. Some of the drums you can buy with the billet shaft already in the drum. Uh, but that John got it this way here. Definitely see the difference in the color from the stock shaft. Uh, the nice work uh, Sonex does on these shafts. Now they do make different versions. They make uh, the later version where the splines go all the way to the end and the lockup ring is, is down here a little farther. So really nice piece here. Now John also got us the Sonex billet uh, Corvette output shaft. Get this out there. Now this one here, this is a special shaft here. Uh, we have seals that go on the back uh, piece here where normally you'd have some machining back here for your reluctor wheel for your speedometer. But this uh, piece here in the back is you'll have a case seal and then you'll have a differential seal. So you have two seals sitting here running on this groove here. But really, really nice piece here. John also went and got the Sonex uh, roller bearing uh, forward clutch hub. This is a really nice piece here that Sonex come out with. Uh, it'll actually retrofit back from the early all the way to the late because uh, they do make two different versions of these. So Sonex a really good upgrade there. We also got our Sonex uh, fourth, gear, fourth gear servo here. Really nice piece here. Like I said, John just went and got everything that he could get uh, pretty much from Sonex. Uh, we have our Sonex forward uh, Sprague hub. Uh, really thick down through here uh, where the cracking occurs. Uh, really nice piece here. We also, let me go over here, we'll go this way here. He also got the Sonex forward planetary. Uh, the six pinion planetary system here, really nice piece. Now this training here, we're gonna shoot for a thousand horsepower holding up uh, with this unit here. So uh, we're gonna also, John got the five pinion planet right here. Now what I like about this is this is a physically an AC Delco style planet here. It's not aftermarket. Uh, I, I like using the GM style five pinion planets. Of course, we can go on and on. We got our wiring harness. We've got our reverse drum here, which actually he got two drums there. We got another one over here, another one here. Uh, we're gonna pick and look, and look at them and kind of determine which one uh, looks to be the best. We've got our gasket set. We've got our AC Delco uh, springs, cage springs, because when you go to the, the new Sonex drum, you have to have a certain uh, spring assembly. So, But he's got two of them, so we've got our bonded pistons, our pressure control solenoid. Now, on our Alto clutch kit here, he's got the nine clutch frictions. Now, we're still gonna, we're not gonna use this. We're gonna go with the Z-Pack, because even though the Z-Pack is a 14 clutch third gear, uh, when we use it on the Sonex drum, we can actually get 17 clutches in third gear. So we're, we're going to upgrade that to the 17 clutch instead of the 9 clutch there. It would be a, I, I, we'll like that a lot better. So not saying this ain't a good kit, but we want to make uh, sure that this tranny stays together. So we've got, we've got our pillow switch here, AC Delco. We have our Sonex hardened stators. We've got two of them. I'm not sure what he's doing here to me. Uh, we've got our AC Delco bearing kit. We've got our solenoids, AC Delco, uh, GM. 
Uh, we have our Borg Warner forward sprag, our, our low reverse sprag assembly here, rotor clutch. And then we also have our Sonex smart shell here. Uh, really nice upgrade. We got your Sonex shell. Uh, you got your uh, sprag race and you got a bearing here uh, that uh, transfers load to a different area and gets it off the little bearing in the planet. So we have our Sonex boost valve. We have our Sonex, uh, this isn't a Sonex uh, bearing kit, but we have a complete Sonex bearing kit here too. Like I say, he bought doubles of some things that will be given back to him. So here's our Sonex bearing kit here. So like I said, we've got to just go through here and see what we got. We've got our Sonex pinless pistons. We've got Sonex bushings. Your Sonex boost valve here. And then he's got another Sonex line pressure boost kit here. So we've got a lot of double stuff in places. So, but, uh, I mean, we got stuff everywhere, guys. Some sun gear. We've got our Transgo kit. So we've got a lot of stuff here. And then here we have these uh, special seals that uh, don't come in your overhaul kit or anything like that. You have to get them separately. This is actually the seal that goes in the differential. And this is the seal that goes into the back of the unit over here. These are the ones that uh, we'll walk over here and I'll show you real quick. But you can't go wrong with Sonex, guys. You can't put enough in them, and that's what this gentleman is doing. He's putting it all in there. But you can see here the groove on this uh, output shaft right here. This is the one that goes in the transmission, or excuse me, the rear end differential. And then this one here goes here. They are identical, but you can, you, you can feel that rut right there. They're pretty strong uh, rubber seal to cut metal. But we replaced both of them, and like I said, we're going to be putting the Sonex uh, output shaft in there too. So get all these plugs off here. Let's see if he tightens that stuff. Let me get a 5 8 wrench real quick. That way I don't bend this stuff. We'll put all this back on there before we get rid of it. I mean, he did a really nice job giving me all the covers, the vent plug, and all that type of stuff. So, well, Like I said, this is an early style. Uh, we have the O-ring on the out, uh, end of the input shaft here, and it's shrunk down in there so far you can't even feel it. I mean, it, it's, it'll probably break taking it off almost, I think. Yeah, it did. You can almost break it again. Once they shrink down into the groove like that and they quit sealing into the converter, then you're going to lose lockup. It'll fade away. It might be there a little hot, but it'll slowly fade away. Or excuse me, they're cold, but it'll slowly fade away uh, when it gets hot because this seal's just shrunk down in the groove so bad. So Let's see if we can get the cover off these. What's cool about these is, is you can take a your regular LS bell housing and put take this uh, adapter here off, put an LS bell housing on here. You can take and put the Corvette rear end on the back of here, and next thing you know, you can put your, an LS motor in, the, in your dune buggy or, or um, in mid frame or something like that, really cool. So that's a really neat idea if you can come up with a Corvette case. Put a regular bell housing on there, put your rear end on there, axles and tires, and be great dune buggy, huh? <laughs> it really would. Like I said, you can take this piece off here, put a regular LS bell housing on there. Put it right behind the LS motor with a rear wheel drive really close like this. Make it a mid-engine type car. So very, very neat. Got a leak on my airline a little bit there. So cold weather getting to things around here. So we got about two, three inches of snow yesterday morning. Gone, almost gone today completely. Dry, yeah, the really 
really dry. Of course, we do have a Corvette servo in here. Of course, we have a Corvette tranny. So, but uh, we'll be updating it with the Sonex uh, servo and stuff and the overdrive cover, servo cover and piston. It's a lot bigger diameter. That way you get more uh, surface area to apply your band and stuff. So an overdrive and second gear. Like I said, he, he sent us everything. <laughs> Just about anyway. I thought that was a socket on that pan there. I guess it's a Allen wrench style. That's what I got here. Of course, it'll probably be some type of metric. You know how that is. That's a little small, but I'm gonna try it just to see if it will. <coughs> yeah, well, get one out, let me go see if I can grab one real quick. Pretty pan. You don't see very many deep pans on Corvettes like this. It's a little, little different. Curious to see what the filter looks like. Now it does have the high fill plug. You can see it here for a Corvette. Because uh, a Corvette you have to fill underneath. There's no dipstick or anything like that. So We don't know if this tranny's been rebuilt before. We don't know if it's burn up. We don't know anything about this unit. Don't look too shabby. So I don't know how it went up in service. Pan gas gasket and stuff looks pretty fresh, but. Definitely has a different style filter for sure. We just did that one Corvette uh, tranny here just the other day and the filter's really thick so we're gonna definitely gonna have to pay attention to the right filter, uh, the one that we put on here for sure. Of course we have our th three, four shift downshift solenoid. We have our PWM solenoid here. Get that out of the way. And we have our, of course, our lock, main lockup solenoid. And we have our pillow switch here. And then we have our two shift solenoids. I talk about these, how they, you get them in here and the solenoid moves really easy like this one does. Because the seals on these solenoids, they shrink just like the seal on the input shaft. They shrink up really bad. So. So we got a brand new wiring harness over there that's going to go on it, really nice. Now you can see here the pressure control solenoid, it's a two plug. Now the later ones have a different end on them here, a different uh, connector here and a different uh, end on the solenoid. So the wiring harness is totally different. <coughs> Park detent spring there. You can see your pillow switch bolts here are the longest ones. 10 millimeter head. Then these shrink down a little bit shorter. And then these here are even shorter. And then you have your three 8 millimeter style here, kind of a little bit L shaped. They're even different. So you can have three of them all by themselves. And then your two short ones here. And then the rest of your 10 millimeter and your three here. And then your two 8 millimeter that go here on your pillow switch. So pretty simple. Of 
course you can see your pillow switch is a really early design it's an opened uh, open cover right here normally we'd, there would be a plastic cover on the later models they decided to seal all this up because they were getting too many medical particles in here and shortening this out because every one of these are, are little micro switches you can push on them and they click it tells the computer what gear it's in so pretty simple We have our valve body here, and we have our pressure control solenoid valve here. We have our PWM valve here that we're going to be blocking. We'll just block this plumb off. He's going to be putting a 3200, 3500 stall converter in here. So we definitely uh, want to block that. Now, I've noticed, though, if you put a multi-clutch in there and you block it, it's definitely going to be a lot, lot firmer. Okay. So we've actually had to go in there and uh, unblock it and put a new valve in here because it was just too firm. Okay. Now on this one here, what we'll do is we'll get some cooler line and we'll cut it down to about an inch or so long and then we'll take this piece right here, set it back in like it's supposed to be, we'll put that valve up against it. And that what we're going to do, we're going to take a piece of cooler line and we're going to cut it to fit in between here and here. It'll set right on top of here and set right on top of here. And you're going to be blocking these two valves apart. And that'll make it a non-PWM system. That's all you have to do. Uh, works really good. We do it on every, com every vehicle that we do, whether it's your grandma's car, four-wheel drive or anything that, like that. But if we do go to a multi-clutch converter, we have seen sometimes a pretty aggressive lockup. So you gotta remember that. You know, we've had to uh, go back in there and unblock it and, and make it physically work when we put a multi-clutch stop converter in there uh, to make the customer happy. Just, I wasn't happy and he wouldn't have liked it neither, so. But on these shift solenoids here, these, this rubber right here shrinks down really bad, just like it does here. Once that starts happening, next thing you know, you get false codes for solenoids and all kinds of stuff because it just can't push the valve back when it's leaking all around here. So, pretty simple. Then we have our forward accumulator here. I'm not sure if he sent me a forward accumulator piston. I'll have to look. If he didn't, uh, we have them over here on the shelf. Uh, where we can at least put an aluminum piston in here and get rid of this plastic one. So they do make a pinless one here too, uh, but it's not as critical as uh, the other ones over there. Uh, they do work really good. Scotch brite this up in here really nice where your piston, your new seal has somewhere uh, to slide and get a little oil in the grooves of the Scotch brite marking. Makes it slide a lot better when it's new. Of course, we have all metal check bolts here and this one here. We're going to be getting rid of those. And then if you notice here, this check ball here is beat into the plate still. It's still stuck in there. It won't come out. So it, it's stuck in there. There it goes. It finally popped out. But look how big that hole is right there beat in there. Look at that. So look at that. Might be able to push it through. Oh, I did all the way through. Huh. See, so that tells you how bad that is. But we'll put another plate in there. We'll look at the others too, because truthfully, if the plate's only bad there, we can repair that real easy. You just want to come over here and look at them all. If they're, they're all wiped out, it's better just to put a plate. It'll be a lot cheaper. So. <coughs> I've been watching a lot of videos out there when I get home and I watch a lot of other people building trannies back. And some of the stuff I'm watching out there isn't really, really good. Um, I'm back there just crunching my teeth together going, you gotta be kidding me uh, that these people are actually doing these videos and putting them out there. I don't think, I know if we were the first ones to start doing these videos or not. But ever since we started doing them, it seems like uh, 
they're starting to come out of the woodworks. And some of the stuff that we've been sitting back and watching, where I'm thinking I'm going to a really good channel to watch, and I just can't, can't bear watching how uh, the trannies are being assembled. Uh, so, I mean, I just, I just can't watch it, so I just get plumb off there. But I just want everybody to know, uh, just use your own common sense when you're watching these videos. You see these guys putting these things together dirty. Uh, use pump parts, use paddles, use, I mean, it just, it were, all that stuff should be replaced. You're paying for it. Uh, you should be getting the product you're paying for. And some of these are final assemblies I watch. I just, I'm just really blown away, like going, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm not that customer. Because we just, we just don't do that. I mean, you come here, are we the most cheapest in town? No, but we're not the most expensive neither. But you get what you pay for here, and plus the 40 years of knowledge along with it on when we put your training back together. I know we're not doing a, a lot of build videos and stuff like that. We're doing more teardown videos, but you know we get seven, eight hours in some of these uh, trannies on building this stuff, and it's hard for Teresa to stand back there and watch. Uh, it, it's just a lot of time. But just use uh, your common sense when you're watching some of these videos of these other places putting these trannies together. So maybe we can get some time and start putting some of these together and showing y'all a little bit of how we do it here because we do it step by step, very clean. Uh, you know, your tranny, the first thing you want is when this tranny fires up, you don't want it cycling trash. So uh, the, the, it, your tranny is going to work on how clean you got it and how clean you got it put back together. I mean, no dust, no dirt. So uh, we have our uh, intermediate uh, uh, sir, or excuse me, accumulator here. Uh, we will be changing these springs out, uh, pulling the pin, going to a pinless style Sonics, a piston and stuff in here. You can see this one here, it's already cracked in three places. Mm -hmm. See, so that's why you want to get rid of all your plastic, uh, go with aluminum pistons, and that way you just don't have that problem. On the, a lot of the pistons, the shanks are longer. Uh, that way it gives it more support when it slides up and down the pin. And then, of course, your Sonex ones, uh, they use the dual ring servo style, uh, or excuse me, accumulator style uh, to uh, center it, keep it centered all the way up and down the bore. So that they are really nice. Like I said, we got a plate that's probably fixable. We can repair it. Of course, we have our wiring harness here. Uh, we have a new wiring harness and stuff that's going in it. We have our lockup solenoid here. And then we have our fourth gear accumulator here. You notice it didn't have any spring in it, none at all. We will be blocking it. Uh, we can use uh, their dual ring uh, accumulator over here. A Sonex is a put in there, or we'll just use, do it the way we do it ourselves. You know, sometimes it, uh, we can do it a little bit easier. So, of course, we have a check ball here, where it's another one fell down in here, and then we have this one here that stays in there. If it's gone, leave it out. If it's in there, leave it in. It doesn't matter. It's, but what's it for? It's uh, actually to slow the clutch down a little bit. This so is a little if bit you leave it out, it doesn't make a difference. Well, it'll bring the clutch on a little bit more, a little faster. But they have a wave in these two to soften up the engagement in reverse and stuff too. So uh, we're going to take that wave out anyway. And this thing having a 3200, 3500 stall, you're not going to be feeling <laughs> uh, anything that we did back here. It's more mainly. I want it to be when he's manually shifting it to get a quick release on this reverse, low reverse clutch. That's why I'm taking the wave out back here. They don't put it in there for that. They put it in there for a softer reverse. They got a wave here, down here on the low reverse piston and clutch assembly. Then they have another bevel plate up here in the reverse clutch up here. So it takes two things to back up, two clutches. So. It only oh, takes you know that people would be asking about that. Yeah. So. I think somebody also asked about that right there. Why don't you take that off and how come? Well, 
it's not something that has to be take, taken out to rebuild it. Uh, you can pull the seal out here, clean all around it, put a new seal in through here. Uh, you don't see a, a lot of damage here. Now, I've, I've had guys call me, uh, they actually bent this rod uh, when they put it together and they put it manual low, this rod kicks over and it clicks in park. So when they put it low, they take off, it goes click, 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 click. They shift it to second, it goes away. It's because they bent, bent this washer at the car wash or in a parts washer, or this rod right here. Uh, they bent it at the car wash or they, uh, it fell over in the parts washer or something like that and it just got uh, bent just a little bit. Yeah. So actually a guy called me back and said, hey, you're right, it fixed it. So. Now he did not give me a new pump kit I noticed over there, I don't see that. Uh, we have new ones over there on the shelf that got all the stainless rings and stuff in them that are really nice. So we're definitely going to be doing that. Now being that this is an early style, it's physically got an O-ring around the pump. Where in the later versions, uh, they got rid of the O-ring and they went to what we call a hard pump ring. So they got rid of this O-ring, this groove right here. I guess they thought it was more expensive there to put a groove in this pump body and redesign this to set in there. And of course the case is different right here. Actually I got a case over here I'll show you. You can kind of see the difference right here. You can see they actually have to cut this out a little bit more right here for this to set down in there. Like that. Well, this one here is just machined at an angle, so it'll push the rubber O-ring, let it slide up in there and lock it into here. Well, this one physically sets down in here. Now, we put the pump in there first, then we set this down in here, uh, tighten the bell housing down, lock the pump down. So, pretty simple. Depending on what year, how you're doing it and stuff like that, you can swap some of this stuff around, but being that this is the early case, you have to stay with this style pump. You can't put that style in there at all. Even with the right pump, style pump for that O-ring, it just won't work. So you can see here we have a 13 vein pump. And that's what that means. <laughs> now this does have like a stainless ring in it, it looks like. You want to look here for any type of wear, right through there, start to see just a little bit, but it looks still in pretty good shape. So we're going to be pushing the uh, stator out of this and putting the Sonex stator in here, so we'll be getting rid of that, put a lot of harder stator in there. Then we'll be going in here and replacing the boost valve too. Let's see what I did my... Got tools scattered everywhere. Get this boost valve out of here. See what how many rings is on it. That'll give me a general idea what we got going here. it right there tries to get crooked as it comes out this end right through here there it goes and we just have a two groove so you can update this to a three groove and, and it makes a big difference if you find a factory one but we're going to be putting a Sonex uh, complete boost valve kit in here. So a lot bigger ends, bigger uh, end for your reverse side and your pressure side. It goes just like that. It'll come with a different spring and stuff in there too. Pretty simple. Okay, we have a 13 vein pump and rotor. You can kind of see here the depth 
of the converter, how far it's been going in here and hanging on. You could actually space that a little bit more and get it up to about right there. But you can see how far that is towards this end right here. You start building the pressure up on these things and you get somebody in there tuning too. Next thing you know, you got 300 pounds pressure uh, on max uh, floor going forward or something, 240 or 250. 240, 250, these, these will break. I mean, they just split them right in half right through here and stuff. So we've played with them all. We know about where they explode. So another stainless ring, all your paddles. You know, I, I watched a, a video on a guy rebuilding a pump the other day. And uh, he put a brand new pump bushing in it, put a brand new seal in it. He puts the original pump slide and the original pump gears and everything right back in it. I was just going, how do you call that a rebuilt pump? <laughs> The front seal and the bushing ain't all to rebuilding a pump. So we have our slide spring there. But we replace, uh, we buy pump kits that come with every piece in the in a pack, one package. You can see here, it's starting to get hot in the center. See that line all the way across, around it in the center right here? Mm -hmm. See that? That tells you these old paddles are starting to push really hard. Now if this thing's been tuned or something, and then we put our boost valves and all that type of stuff in there. He's going to have more pressure than he, this tranny wants. And that's where you start seeing this type of stuff. I mean, they've got, they, I guarantee you this thing's probably been programmed. They've already bumped the pressure up so high that this is where this pump is starting to turn this slide that way. So we see it. We put a gauge on all of ours, especially if they've been tuned. And I mean, some of the uh, tunes that we get in here, it tries to blow the hose off my gauge. So you'll start seeing wear here on your paddles where your, ring, your stainless rings run. If this was a cast ring style uh, pump, it probably would already broke. I mean, them rings probably would have exploded. So, like I said, I watched a gentleman rebuild a pump, put a new seal pump bushing, and then put all this used stuff back in there and then tied it down and, and said, there's my rebuilt pump. I'm going, oh my gosh. But we have a pump slide pin here. We get a lot of wear on one side of these. You can see here, nothing. You come over here, you can start seeing it. If you can see that right there. Mm -hmm. So we replace all of them. Got your pumps, uh, pin spring too that keeps it up to the top. That way it stays all the way to the top here. If you leave it out, it'll fall down like that. That, that spring is what keeps it up in center. So you have to put that back in there. Of course, look at this really good. Scott's brought this up. And even the guy that uh, I watched build his pump, he left all that in there. And we, we always come in here, clean all that up, make sure it looks really nice for our new paddles and rings and stuff to slide on. So same way here, replace this, this uh, pump guide. This keeps it all straight in there too. And then we have our pump washer, stator washer. We like to knock the, get the band knocked out of the anchor. Once you do that, you can pull this drum out. If you try to pull it out with it all still in there, this band will hang right here. And next thing you know, you just can't get it by it and it gets all cocked up and stuff like that. So always take and knock that out. Now you can see this is just a stock band and it's smoked. All right here, we'll put that uh, uh, green band, that heavy duty one in there. That'll cover the whole drum, all the way from one side to the other. And then you want to look at your drum here too. Uh, we keep this piece here. We can take and stick this on here like this and look for any type of uh, bowing in the drum. Take a flashlight, put it under there, see if you see any daylight. Looks really good. You're checking three or four spots all the way around. Take some 180 grit. We, we got uh, scotch Bright over there. It's, it's not scotch Bright, but it's... Uh, like a band saw type paper with this 180 grip that we'll put in our vise and we'll come over here and do this all the way around. Move it all the way around. You don't want to take a buffer. Let me find, I don't see my, I've been doing a lot of port and heads and stuff, but if you have one of these like this with a pad on it and you stick it on here like this, 
you don't want to sit here and, and, and put this and do this all the way around. Your motion has to be with the travel of the band. So like I said, we got some white 80 grit uh, paper over there that we use that this drum, we could set in there and clean this up really nice and make it look new. But you also want to look right here where your shell runs. You want to look right through here on this drum too. Right through here, you'll start seeing where, where your shell runs right in here. Now our last video, uh, me and Teresa did on a uh, 4L60E, uh, the reverse drum cut a big old groove around in the case and we had to replace the case. Uh, Trent and him actually got that in uh, yesterday evening and we drove it yesterday evening and uh, it works really nice. But we had to replace the whole case uh, just because of that. Now, do they make stronger drums here? You know, I really don't know. Uh, we have a couple over there. We got one that he sent me made in Taiwan. We got another one uh, over there. I think it's an AC Delco uh, drum. I'm not for sure. I'll get look at the box and see what it looks like. So, of course, we have our reverse clutch here. And then we have our bevel here. Now, we'll leave the bevel in this. There's nothing wrong with that. This is just a... a it's, kind of like a wave, it softens your reverse the same time it applies it. And then it actually does two functions. You can see this hole here doesn't have a check ball in it. But once this bevel gets flattened all the way down, it, it plugs that hole off. But no more in the release of the pressure, this, uh, it, it blows out right there and blows the pressure off the clutch really quick. See, so there's no check ball in there. You definitely want to look down in here, make sure you're not seeing no grinding marks or where the steels have been uh, grinding themselves in here, putting indentions and stuff all through here. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Place your bushing, all this up through here, scotch right it up through here where your new rings are going to be running. Like I said, we got two drums to pick through over there. Of course, we got our forward drum assembly here. Uh, you got your ceiling rings here, you got your third gear clutch apply, your forward clutch apply, uh, your engine brake clutch apply, all through these holes right here. So you definitely want to make sure you don't cut any of these rings putting them back in. This little bearing right here, guys, is real critical about checking too because this bearing right here, will, if it's bad, it'll whine in park, it'll whine in neutral, you'll think it's a pump whining when it's this little bearing right here. And then you have a selective if I can get that out. And we have a selective spacer right here. Usually it'll tell you, it's a 69 right here. They make them 70, 71. So, I mean, they make different ones to be able to set your clearances, okay? This isn't your clearance washer. This here is. Okay, so you got to check it in a different way. Of course, we just have your six clutches here. It's going to be really exciting to do that Sonex drum. I like putting all that stuff together like that. It makes it funner. You've been doing it as long as I am. you got to make it fun, huh, babe? <laughs> So we have our load springs here, look really good still. We have our 3-4 clutch, it's almost burnt up. Now there's just 6 clutches here, we're going to put the Z-Pack in there and put 17 clutches in this 3-4 clutch pack. So that's going to be a big upgrade. Now anytime you use the Sonex drum, you're going to be using these retainers. You're going to use their springs, you're going to take these springs out and you're going to put their real tall springs in there, but you're going to be using the same retainer. So we don't throw any of them away just because of that reason. Of course we have our forward clutch plates here and our engine brake clutch. Now we do have a wave here, then a steel, then a clutch all the way to the out, okay? 
On the early 700s, the clutch went against the wave. The clutch was thicker, so, but uh, the early ones did that. But on the, when they moved it up to the uh, 4L60 and then it went into the E's, they started adding the clutch, steel, and then wave. So you got your engine brake clutches here. Now, on the Sprague assembly, I was talking about how we have that new hardened Sonex uh, forward hub over there. I'm going to grab that really quick and show you the difference in uh, the way Sonex designed it real quick. What they do is, these are really, they, they've designed this uh, two different uh, versions of this hub right here, but they've always left it really thick and these fingers start cracking right through here and breaking off, break, just destroys it. Well, you can come here and see how Sonex stepped it down to get the snap ring in, but they left it just massive on the hub itself. I mean, it's, I mean, it's like twice as thick on these fingers right here, if you can zoom in there and see that. From here mm -hmm. to here compared to here to here. I mean, it is night and day difference. Mm -hmm. So, a very good upgrade right there, too. And you want to look at your uh, outer race. Make sure there's no chattering marks or anything like that. If it's not, just clean it up really good with some Scotch-Brite. Of course, we're putting a lot better Sprague assembly in. It's going to be a dual cage style that he, uh, he also got for us. You want to look at this inner Sprague race really good. Looks good. Scotch brought it up. Look at your sun gear on both sides. For any type of wear, no wear, change your bushings out. Put it all back together with your Sonex hub. Look at that. Beautiful. Like I say, we're replacing the complete input shaft and the drum into, the, into all Sonex pieces there. So that's going to be really nice. Snap ring out. Of course, in here we have our forward planet here. Uh, now this is your four pinion. We're putting a six pinion Sonex in there with their Sonex billet hub, Sonex bearing kit, and all that type of stuff in here. Get rid of this thrust washer. It's gonna be really nice. And here we have our shell here. Now, even on your shell, you want to look here for any type of wear where it locks into your reverse drum. You got wear here, you're going to have wear here. And like I said in um, my earlier video, uh, where the drum starts cutting the case in half, if uh, you start spinning this thing, you know, seven, 8,000 RPM in low gears, then these fingers are going to come out. They're going to just automatically bend out from the force of the drum spinning. And next thing you know, you're going to have case being cut in this thing too. So if you got, you know, the tuning on these things is real critical uh, to try to shift them out just a little bit early in first gear. You know, and then, especially with your new Stonex Planet, it'll actually love it when you do it. So, oh, oh bless you. reverse clutch here. We won't be adding any. We'll be leaving the same amount of clutches in there. We'll be just getting rid of the wave, adding a couple of steels and cutting some fingers off here to make it set down against the piston. If you just try to set them down in there, uh, this steel will try to set above the piston and next thing you know you'll have a gap that big uh, between the piston and the plate and you don't want that. But you want it to get it where uh, set up to where no more than you shift it no more than that piston moves, it's, this is released. If you leave the wave in there, the clutch is going to be still applied uh, when you shift it until it completely releases the, bev the, the flatness or the, the, the wave off. So if you take that out, put two flat ones in there, cut some tips off, and we usually use the, all the clutches back into the factory ones. We don't have to do any buffing or adding anything, do anything crazy. It fits usually right back in there. 
So what we do is we stick the clutches in there with this in there, and then we put our snap ring in. We can air check it that way, and plus we can get our fingers down in here and, and, and pick up on the clutches and see how much clearance we have with our planet stuff out. If you leave the planet in there, you can't get in there and do that. So you want to assemble this first, get your clearances right, and then start assembling it, uh, putting the planetary and stuff back in there. So getting tongue tied a little bit, get going, going too fast, but mm -hmm. just uh, looking for wear. Same way with your sun gear on both sides of your teeth, you want to look for any type of wear, which we have a brand new sun gear over there too. So we have a nice uh, five pinion planet over there too. We're going to be putting, now you see GM added an oil slinger on these here to try to direct that oil into these pins on this planet right here. Because these pins here actually under here got a hole in them. The, the pin is actually hollow. Not all of them are hollow. Uh, but they did, they ran uh, directional oil in there. So pretty crazy how they do it. Of course we have our ring gear. You want to look at both sides of here. See if you're anywhere. Check to make sure it's not trying to strip through here. He actually sent me one over there that's, uh, you want to check here for any type of wear. Same way with this one here. If you take this off, you can start seeing wear in here. Mm -hmm. The biggest wear point on these was right through here in the day. And then this here, you really didn't see it that much. But on that one. Did on that one. So same way your ring gear, you work on both sides there. And then of course you got your output shaft for the Corvette style. You can see here where that uh, transmission or the rear end differential seal was starting to cut into it pretty good. But the one on the transmission was not. So it looks like it barely touched it, huh? Wow. Kind of weird how they did that. Makes you wonder, is transmission oil lubricating this seal better? and not cutting the shaft where we have differential oil lubricating this seal and it's cutting the shaft. Kind of weird, huh? Mm -hmm. See, here's our other seal here. Yeah. See, and there's no wear on this shaft there where that seal runs, none at all. But where the differential seal runs, which is the exact same seal, we have that wear. Yeah. Kind of makes you wonder, huh, on that, uh, if the tranny oil is lubricating that seal better than the differential oil lubricating that seal. Who knows, guys, but look at the Sonex stuff. Boy, do I got my hands full here uh, today and tomorrow. We're putting this together. But it's going to be really exciting to do. I love it when I can just add all this neat, neat uh, product into our builds and stuff like that. It just makes it so much funner. Teresa, I want to thank you definitely for recording. we got Annie over there hanging out again like always, guys. But, hey, don't forget to go subscribe we got a ton more stuff coming, and we definitely enjoy you guys watching. Have a great day.